Okay, this is video number three of a three-part video series. My name is Leslie Williams. Look in the description of this YouTube video for the YouTube titles in reference to video number one and two. All three YouTube titles will be the same except for one. The first video will have a number one in it in its title. The second will have a number two in it, and the third will have a number three in it. I'm in La Jolla. Today's date is April. I mean, I'm sorry. Today's date is August second, two thousand fourteen. I'm going to literally use this phone right now in order to state the date. To, to use a voice command feature within the phone in order to use the uh, phone to electronically state the date. Say a command. August 2nd, Saturday, 3.56 p.m. Now the reason why I did that and also showing you the icon picture of the phone is in order to be able to, I use the voice command feature so the tape recorder that's taping my verbal statements right now can, uh, so the tape recorder file that's recording can also uh, show that what today's date is. I'm in San Diego, California. I live in La Jolla. My name is Leslie Williams. <laughs> I am a target victim and an activist concerning the criminal expeditions of what is known as organized stalking, which can also be termed as gang stalking. And what I do in part in reference to as a result of me being a target of organized stalking is I make videos exposing what has happened to me, what's currently happened to me, and what might. Excuse me. Now, uh, I made, in, in the first video, I literally showed some audio evidence proving undisputably that I am a victim of this crime. I also, I also played a segment of an audio of a news broadcast pertaining to uh, organized stalking, gang stalking, targeted individual being covered on the news. You can go and watch that uh, news broadcast by going to YouTube and typing in gang stalking bullying on steroids. That way you can observe that this criminality has been covered on the news and that it is a crime that is realized by the public as a result of it being covered on the news. This type of criminality has also been covered on national radio shows, national TV shows, and multiple different local news broadcasts. Now, basically what I do is when I catch evidence of me being gang stalked, I upload it to videos and then upload those videos to the internet. I'm not only uploading the evidence, but I'm also uploading the uh, places that the uh, criminality is happening to me at and I describe who's playing a role in it at these places, including the individuals who harass me at this area. Hold on one second. I gotta put my shirt back on, so just, uh, I apologize for my appearance, but I've been working all day, and I'm inside of a tent that's got some heavy-duty weatherization sheets on top of it, so it's a little bit, a little bit humid inside the tent. So I, I do, uh, I do apologize for my physical appearance, but, anyway, so, um, what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just attempting to deconstruct in this three-part video series some of the criminal motivations that they have for the target and how they attempt to bring them about. I have made multiple, multiple, multiple other videos uh, in-depthly detailing these criminal motivations and the schemes, maneuvers, tactics, and methods that they use in order to attempt to bring about the motivation. And I'm also explaining it again in this three-part video series because I want to be able because see I've made a lot of other videos describing the criminal motivations and the maneuvers tactics and methods used to bring about the motivation but a person that might be watching this today might not have seen any of those videos so I decide to uh, keep my videos up to date for first-time uh, viewers hold on now don't forget my periodic comical posture deflect you or distract you from the extreme criminality that I am horrifically experiencing on a daily basis. Hold on. So I'm going to wrap this three-part video series up by talking about one of the aspects of one of the methods of organized stalking, gang stalking, targeted individuals in reference to what they do against the targeted individual. Hold on. Now what you got to do in reference to this three-part video series but you got to understand that in the first video and in the second video, there's undisputable audio proof that I'm being targeted with these crimes. Okay, and some other things are mentioned in it as well in reference to what the, some of the criminal motivations are. So you got to watch those two YouTube videos. In this particular video, I'm going to go out of my way to describe psychic driving in reference to how psychic driving is used against the organized stalking gang stalking target. Now. Psychic driving is basically where these criminal whores will use anybody and everybody in the community to assist them in the psychic driving. Hold on. 
You might think to yourself, what the hell? Excuse me. <coughs> you might think to yourself, what the hell is psychic driving? Well, I'm going to give you a couple, just one pictorial visual representation pertaining to what psychic driving is so you can anchor in your mind a visual representation of it. Do you know how like when you go to ride your bike or drive a car or a van or a truck or a boat, whatever, and you get behind the wheel, let's just say a car. You get inside the car, you sit down, you shut the door, you put the key in the ignition, you turn the ignition, you put it in a drive, you press the gas, and you're steering the car. So you can go straight, left, right, or backwards. You are literally steering that car to go in a specific direction. Okay? Well, psychic driving, steering, driving, steering, is where they try to steer and drive a target's thinking, their psychology. And they do this by anchoring associations, okay? And they do this through several different techniques. One, a couple of those techniques are called the direct conversation method, sensitization tactics, and um, fear, where they will intentionally attempt to create post-traumatic stress in the target individual. They will attempt to classically condition what is known as preconditioned rage. And they will also classically condition uh, a fear. So you got, they, they literally attempt to create brain states by driving the target's thinking out. By driving the target's thinking based on what the target experiences by them. Case in point, throughout the entire year of 2013 while I was at this area, I made two videos every day. Uh, excuse me, I just had a pop tart. Two videos I made every day was, uh, out of the two videos that I would meet, that I made each and every day throughout the entire year 2013, one video was made to predict what could happen towards me, concerning me, about me, around me, or against me for that day, concerning me being out and about in the community. They were video, they were verbal statements, me predicting what might happen towards me. The other video, okay, that I would make every day, okay, would be a video pertaining to me talking about what was happening to me here at this hiking area. Now. Think about this. Two videos made practically every. I, I stopped making two videos every day about the uh, around the first week of December, 2013, because I got tired of making. Because each video would be at least a half hour long. So if you got two videos that are half hour long, that's an hour that I would have to take out of my schedule during the fall and winter. Okay, just just before I could leave for the day, and it was taking too much time out of my schedule because during the fall and winter in San Diego, it gets dark at five. So if I'm getting a late start to my day, not getting on here until like 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, 12, and then having to stop and make two videos, which is at least taking an hour to do, that's one more hour out of my schedule. It takes 45 minutes to an hour for me to at least get to the bus, you know, to go through the bus stops and bus routes to get me to a library. It takes me another half hour to 40 minutes to get settled in. Then I got to do my work and then try and get back to the second area before it gets dark. So it was taking a lot of time out of my schedule. So around early December 2013, I stopped making two videos every day. And, and, and then just started only making one or two a week. And then stating in those videos that these videos apply for the next week or two weeks. But every day throughout the entire year of 2013, I was making two videos every day in the ways that I've already just mentioned. And one of the and, and each of the videos that I made every day pertaining to me talking about what I was experiencing at this area. I was stating that people were getting up on the sidewalk, riding their bikes by, jogging by, walking by, and saying gang stalk, why don't you come and steal her stuff? And and at different times they were saying gang stalk, why don't you call the cops on her? I was also stating in, in these videos that the individuals that they, they had, that they had set up to hike out 150 feet away were doing the same exact identical thing. They were just yelling it from from a distance. Okay. Now, each and every one of those videos were uploaded throughout the entire year of 2013 every day. Okay, And they're online. All you got to do is go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Predicts Hiking Area. Uh, uh, makes prediction in hiking areas. Learning Disabled Woman Predicts Harassment. Learning Disabled Woman Predicts Gang Stalking. And if you keep looking for them and even copy and paste all the YouTube titles and their dates, you'll see that I uploaded hundreds. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this. I was stating that every day in a video, every single day throughout the entire year 2013, up until about the first week of December, I stated that they were putting people up on the sidewalk to say gang stalk with two different kinds of threats, and I was also talking about how the individuals that they had set up to hike out 150 feet away were yelling the same exact type of threats. Now, threats 
and gang stalking are called dark neurologistic programming techniques, and that term can be googled and YouTubed, and cross reference to gang stalking, and it's you and it is implemented using what is known as the direct conversation method where basically what they'll do is get around your environment and act like they're talking and while they're talking they will make sure that you hear threats things that are of dark nature about you or concerning you that's why they call it dark neural logistic programming the neural logistic programming of dark neural logistic program programming means that they're trying to program you neurally using language using dark themes a threat okay so basically what they're doing is as a result of you hearing a threat you have a thought about the threat because they they want you to know that the threat is concerning you and that's why they say gang stalk as they say the threat I'm gonna prove it right now what I'm gonna do is turn on this phone and then I'm gonna literally play you a segment of an audio file of an event that took place on the sidewalk across the street right up the street from this area and one of the two guys that played a role in this Thanksgiving event was one of the men that was hiking out 150 feet away that harassed me day and night from November 2012 all the way up until mid-April of 2014 and he was just seen by me three days ago when they moved out they only moved 300 feet away okay now remember throughout the entire year 2013 I was making a video at each day at this area explaining what I've already forementioned pertaining to who was doing it and where they were doing it at sidewalk and the individuals that were set up to hike out 150 feet away I was ex I explained already what they were doing they were saying gang stalk why don't you come and steal her stuff gang stalk why don't you call the cops on her and in some of them and, and in some of them and in some of them I even stated about how on two separate dates they got two separate UCSD students to say the same exact identical verbal threat while they were saying gang stalk now the reason why they're saying gang stalk as they were saying these threats hold on is because they wanted that fear to be associated to a dark term. What do you think of when you hear the word gang? Well, you think of violent motorcycle gangs, violent street gangs. What do you think of when you hear the word stalking? Well, uh, it automatically comes to mind inst instinctively that stalking is related to a crime, that somebody is following you. That produces fear. Because that is already associated in your mind that stalking has to do with a crime that is usually has to do with something violent happening to someone. So you got gang, which has got dark themes to it, and then stalking, which has got dark themes to it, gang stalking. So both of those words combined together bring about a negative meaning. While that word is being said, a threat is being said. Why don't you come and steal her stuff? Why don't you call the cops on her? And guess what you're about ready to hear? Two men one of them being directly connected to the assholes that they had set up 150 feet away that harassed me day and night and the reason why I know it was him because he not only yelled it but then they would walk by right by my tent and engage in specific organized stalking other gaslighting techniques gaslighting techniques are are methods that are also uh, used against organized stalking gang stalking targets by the individuals that are either part of the syndicate or that are being used by the syndicate gaslighting is a is a term that describes techniques that are brought about against gang stalking targets so basically what they and and they not just walk by going out of this area they also walked by me going back into to go to their area so think about this it's already associated in my mind that I'm hearing it from them and then they're coming from that area walking out and then coming back in so the visual association became associated so I recognize the guy immediately pertaining to this Thanksgiving event now Thanksgiving is at the tail end of 2013 and this event occurred on a sidewalk right across the street now I was already making videos throughout the entire year 2013 that individuals were, uh, were getting up on the sidewalk and saying gang stalk why don't you come and steal your stuff gang stalk why don't you call the cops on her two different threats while they're saying gang stalk and I was also mentioning about how the individuals that they set up 150 feet away were yelling the same exact identical thing because the whole goal is to put the target in a fearful mindset to make them paranoid that the cops are going to be called and that or their property is going to be stolen while they're intentionally making sure that if these things do happen or at least the threat and the fear that's generated from the threat they want to make sure that the target knows that it's intentionally being done because they're a gang stalking victim that's why they will say gang stalk why don't you come and steal her stuff gang stalk why don't you call the cops on her because they want the target to know that they're being victimized because of gang stalking even though they can't prove it after an event occurs because they'll deny it they're told to deny it 
Now, this guy right here, one of these two men that you're about ready to hear, as they're harassing me and threatening me on the sidewalk right across the street from this sidewalk, right up the street, as they're harassing me and threatening me, guess what they're saying? Gang stalk. Now, what have I already stated in this video? They were getting up on the sidewalk and saying, gang stalk wants to come and steal your stuff, a threat. Gang stalk wanted to call the cops on her, a threat. All of these videos were made throughout the entire year of 2013, and then this is caught at the tail end of November, Thanksgiving Day 2013, on a sidewalk right across the street. And as they're harassing me and threatening me, they're saying gang stalk. Gang stalk wants to come and steal her stuff, a threat. Gang stalk wants to call the cops on her, a threat. And then listen to what these guys are saying. Gang stalk, I'm gonna F you up, a threat. Okay, so I think that you can automatically identify. Hold on a second. Now, what you got to do is you got to look at this with common sense and at least deductive reasoning. What is the likelihood that I was making videos throughout the entire year of 2013 stating what I've already forementioned, pertaining to them putting people up on the sidewalk to say gang stalking and threatening me with two different, two different threats, and while the same, and while the same exact threats, while while people were saying gang stalk, were being yelled at from me, uh, what? concerning how they were being yelled at 150 feet away from me by individuals that they set up to hike 150 feet away from me, okay? Then, at the tail end of the year 2013, I catch this being said towards me on a sidewalk right across the street, okay? And one of the men that played a role in it was directly connected to the assholes that they set up 150 feet away. That proves that I, every video I made throughout the entire year of 2013, I was telling the truth. Because they were saying two different types of threat while they were saying gang stalk on the sidewalk. And I was making videos about it throughout the entire year, each day, throughout the entire year of 2013. And then this event occurs on a sidewalk in late 2013, Thanksgiving Day. So why won't the San Diego police make a police report concerning this? Are they involved in gang stalking? The same exact method was heard on, and caught on tape recorders happening around me inside the San Diego Police Department headquarters. Uh, a website called Cops Caught on Camera. <clears throat> when I caught the gang stalking being set around me continually inside their San Diego Police Department headquarters, on uh, July 24, 2013, it was caught on tape recorder. Those audio files were uploaded to video files and then published to the internet. You can go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes Gang Stalk. Learning Disabled Woman Exposes SDPD HDQ, which stands for San Diego Police Department Headquarters. A website uh, uh, named um, caught, Cops Caught on Camera uh, saw that video of the audios and uploaded that, uploaded that to their blogs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in my possession right now, in my physical possession, I literally have literally over 800 separate audio files of gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalking, oh my god, gang stalk, crazy, gang stalk, weird, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk being set around me every single day, everywhere I go, in the same exact identical way, everywhere I go, nonstop. Do you think that's an accident? That is their way to keep me in a psychological, circular, uh, neural mental loop. 
in order to keep the victimization alive in the conscious forefront of my daily experiences everywhere I go by constantly and repetitively repeating these words and phrases along all of my routes. And if you go to Google and type in organized stalking or gang stalking and how they repeat words and phrases, okay, towards targets or and or physical gestures and or sounds, you'll see that it is a method of gang stalking. So ask yourself, why won't the SDPD make a police report? You gotta watch the first and second video of this three-part video series. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. Now, I showed a video picture of my cell phone in this video. I also used the voice command feature, which enabled the phone to state the date electronically. And a tape recorder is also tape recording my statements that I'm making in this video. I'm at the location right now, where I was brutally assaulted at on July 9th. Today's date is August 2nd. I was literally bruised. The only reason why these bags are here is because I'm going through property and then I'm, once I'm done going through them, I'm going to resituate these bags where they came from. But anyways, <clears throat> I was pretty assaulted right outside this tent on July 9th, 2014. On July 6th, 2014, I made a video right at the very spot I was assaulted at two and a half days later. On July 6th, I made a video prediction stating, let's see if anybody comes here and harasses me, threatens me, or assaults me. Okay, that video was uploaded the day it was made on July 6th, 2014. The video was kept by me on the video card that it was made on. Okay? Then, on July 9th, two men came up in here, and one of them assaulted me at the very spot the video prediction was made at. That video is still on the video memory card. It was shown to the San Diego police as a result of me calling them. They wanted me to give them that video card. I told them I couldn't because they had other evidence on it. Now that video is already, I made a copy of it on my computer, and I already uploaded it to the internet. You can go to YouTube and type in 070914, learning to save a woman, brutally assaulted again. And then when you bring that up, look for a YouTube video that was uh, published in the same YouTube channel two and a half days prior, on 0706. And you'll literally see that video of me predicting an assault. And since I still got the video file, of me being assaulted on two and a half days later, later on July 9, 2014, the video file reflects the timestamp and the date stamp. So what's the likelihood of that occurring? That's the fourth assault that I have predicted. The fourth. Two were predicted in email files, all four were predicted in audio files, and the third one was predicted in an audio file eight hours before it occurred, 90 seconds before it occurred, and 30 seconds before it occurred. And that assault occurred right across the street. They're using homeless people because they're easily bought off and paid for, and they're easily resituated in another com in, in other communities after they're used. And so the syndicated cops can say, "Well, how are we supposed to find them, Miss Williams? They're homeless." All right, so. Uh, you got to look at the first two videos in order to be able to observe what's happening to me now I am not involved in any whatsoever illegal or criminal activity whatsoever I do not know the individuals at all in any way shape or form in any way shape or form That are managing and perpetrating this criminal reality of me or any of the individuals that they're using in reference to I can identify some of them because they're actually even using business employees and management at business plazas I go to. Now, gang stalking is already happening in the business community anyways. Like say, for instance, if a, a manager or fellow employees of another employee is being gang stalked at work, okay? It's called work mobbing, and that term can be Googled. So when you re research work mobbing and gang stalking, and you discover that gang stalking is happening towards fellow employees at work, then you can easily see that gang stalking is already happening in the business community. So that should automatically tell you that I'm telling you the truth when I say that I go into multiple different businesses, okay, and individuals that work there, employees, management, even security guards are engaging in specific gaslighting techniques of me, either, either using physical gestures and or repeating words and phrases. Again, the whole goal for them is to attempt to keep me psychologically reminded in order to steer my thinking every time I am reminded about being a victim of this crime, every time I see the, rep the repetition of what they're repeating, sensitization methods, okay? So, uh, when they steer a target's thinking based on the theme of the threat, based on the non-stop overt harassment that they experience as a result of constantly hearing gang stalk being said around them or constantly being subject to individuals engaging in specific physical gestures that they've been sensitized to, 
That is done and repeatedly done in order to steer the thinking of a target in reference to the thought process the target has as a result of each experience. And based on the theme of the threat. If a target is being threatened that they're going to be assaulted, then they're going to live in a paranoid state. If they bring people down up in here to assault me, and right before the assault occurs, they engage in a physical gesture, okay, that is their overt way to let me know that this assault is happening because of gang stalking. Go to YouTube and type in, Learning Disabled Woman Catches Gang Stalker Admitting Sent to Harass. Read comments. And what that means is that look in the description of that YouTube video in order to be able to see that there's another video in the description of that YouTube video that was made two months before I caught those three teenagers admitting to what they admitted to repeating certain physical gestures, okay? So basically, when they come and assault you at your hiking area where you're living at or across the street from it where you go and sit every day once you leave the hiking area in order to situate your bags and stuff, what they want you to do is be worried about when is the next assault gonna take place at the area you were assaulted at. That's why they anchor fear to gang stalking. Gang of stalking, I'm gonna fuck you up. Gang stalk, why don't you call the cops on her? What's gonna happen today? Are the cops gonna be called? Gang stalk, why don't you come and steal her stuff? What's gonna happen today? Is my property gonna get stolen? Because they want you to live in a non-stop paranoid mindset based on the theme of the threat. Psychic driving. They're steering your thinking based on the threat. While they're making sure that the threat and the fear that is anchored is associated to gang stalking. And this is how psychic driving works, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. I made this video to deconstruct the mystery of these methods, tactics, and maneuvers in order to demystify, okay, the factual realities of, of these techniques. So target individuals can get a grasp concerning how their thinking is intentionally being entrained based on the theme of the threats, the theme, uh, uh, the, um, they, they will literally even use the most worst, skanked out, punked out, bikish looking, freaked out skanks to get along your route to repeat these things because they want to make you even feel visually afraid because the guy who's, who's doing it towards you, around you, looks threatening. Okay? Yeah. They want to make sure that you are kept in and put in and kept in a hyper vigilant mindset about what's going to happen next, what's going to happen now. So this is the methodologies of gang stalking. I made this video today in order to inform, to expose the truth to the community and to my fellow target individuals who might not be able to have, who might not have anchored in their mind yet the terms that describe these techniques. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.